Hi guys! Alright, today Mr. Long, you'll be your PE teacher. Beep beep. So what's going to happen is, imagine now you're in a class mm -hmm. of 40 people and we're going to run a 2.4 race. Okay, so you're going to versus another class of 40 people. Okay. So of course, uh, the fastest class will win. Uh. Faster? Uh, wait, how do I know who wins and who loses then? Fastest? Okay, so I think the rule here is we're going to look at the slowest person. Okay. When the slowest person crosses the finish line, that will be the timing of the class. Oh, mm. interesting, interesting. And, and the winner the winner gets what? Oh, I think the winner will get a candlelight dinner with Mr. William. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, Mr. Long, this kind of reminds me about reaction kinetics, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. So I think we're going to link it to the idea of reaction mechanism. Okay. So uh, let's recall again what's a mechanism. Uh, the idea over here is that any kind of reaction don't really just happen in just a snap of a finger, right? Nope, nope. Uh, the A and the B uh, reactants, usually they don't boom and then suddenly just give you the products. <laughs> yeah. uh, they usually occur through a series of steps. Mm -hmm. uh, they become some, become some other random things first before becoming the product. Yep. So that whole series of steps is what we call a reaction mechanism. Right? And uh, for reaction mechanism, uh, we have an example over here. This is going to be a mechanism of three steps. And there are a couple of skills that you must pick up. First of which is to come up with the overall equation. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Tim, can you run us through how do we achieve that? Well, overall equation is not difficult. You just take all your left-hand side reagents, you mm -hmm. add them up, and the right-hand side products, you add them up. Okay? Okay. So if I do that with you, you would notice the C and the C, they will cancel off because it's mm -hmm. both on the left and right-hand side. Mm -hmm. The E, they will also cancel off and the D for dog, they will also cancel off, right? So if I combine everything now, you would see my overall equation just becomes A plus 2B becomes F. Okay, great. Okay, that's it. So that is the method which I think is quite simple. So that's the first skill you must pick up. How do you come up with the overall equation? Mm -hmm. Now the next of which, right, is the things that you have cancelled, Mr. Tim, yeah. uh, they are either called a catalyst mm -hmm. or an intermediate. Uh -huh. So that's the second job. You need to recognise the things that you cancel. Is it a catalyst or intermediate? Oh. And how do we determine that? So we have a table at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, the easy way to take a look is if I have an intermediate, mm -hmm. it will generally be uh, generated first before it is used up in a subsequent step. Mm -hmm. But for a catalyst, it is the other way around. It will be used up first before generated at the end of the reaction. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, using that, Mr. Tim, can you look at the things that you've cancelled and tell me who is a catalyst and who is an intermediate? Ah, sure, sure. Okay, so you can see for um, C, right, species C, mm. it's being generated first then mm. later consumed. So clearly it's an intermediate. Same thing for E, generated first then later consumed. So intermediate, right? So your intermediates here, are basically C and E, right? And go on, mm -hmm. Mr. Leong, help me out. Uh, so how about a catalyst? So a catalyst is somebody that is being uh, uh, used up first. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, who is being used up first? Well, I see that D is being used up first, mm -hmm. then regenerated later. That's right? right. So D is going to be your catalyst. Okay, okay? great. So if you take a look at this particular um, uh, table over there, mm -hmm. you can actually uh, uh, see the difference between them. So one of the things that's important on the last point over here mm -hmm. is that intermediates generally don't appear in the overall equation. No. Yes, but catalyst, it does. And how does it manifest itself in the equation? You normally write the catalyst above the arrow yep. of the overall equation. So Mr. Tim, can you help me to add it in? Sure. Okay, so that's skill number two, right? Recognizing who's an intermediate and who's a catalyst. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the third skill that's important over here is turns out we are able to relate the rate equation to the mechanism. Yep. Okay, so that's yep. a very important skill that you must pick up. Mm -hmm. So we have it on the top left-hand corner of our screen. Okay. okay, that's the most important statement. So this statement tells us uh, that in a reaction mechanism, I'm always going to zoom in into the slow step first. Yep. Right? And we're going to pay attention to the stoichiometry of the reactants. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Tim, can you tell me what are they? Well, I see that my, in my slow step, it is mm. C plus D gives me E. Mm. So the stoichiometry is both 1 is to 1. That's right. right. And it turns out this stoichiometry is going to correlate to the order of the reactants mm -hmm. uh, uh, inside the rate equation. Yep. yep. Okay. So I can write my rate equation for you right now. Mm. And it should be quite simple. So it's rate constant mm. multiplied by the concentration of C raised to the power of the stoichiometric ratio, which mm. is 1. And I can do the same thing for D, which is also 1. Okay? That's right. Now, there's a problem with this rate equation. There is, yeah. yes. Because uh, in the table at the bottom over here, there's this very important idea that intermediates can never appear in the overall rate equation. Yes, right? yes. So therefore, what I have to do over here is I need to think of a way to get rid of an intermediate here. Okay. When I look at the rate equation that Mr. Tim wrote, there is a C, mm -hmm. which is going to be the intermediate. Yep. Right? So we need to get rid of it. And how do we do that? So it turns out we always have to use the preceding step uh, from the slow step. 
So a slow step is the second step. I need to pay attention to step one instead. Mm -hmm. Now step one is actually a reversible reaction. So uh, actually we you haven't really learned this yet, but the whole idea is in equilibrium, you can always write this thing called a equilibrium constant. Mm -hmm. Equilibrium constant is always given by products divided by reactants. Okay, the concentration of products divided by concentration of reactants. So Mr. Tim, can you help me to write that out? Yep. So it's going to be C over concentration of A times concentration of B. That's right. right. And normally you have to raise uh, the order, right, the power mm -hmm. uh, using the stoichiometry. Yep. Okay. Now, my objective is to get rid of C. So probably I will use the KC at the top uh, so that I can make C the subject of the formula. Mm. Okay, so can you help me to do that? Yep. Okay. Okay, and can you show us how you're going to replace it in? Yeah, sure. So I've just made C the subject. So we're going to put the whole thing in now. So this is equals to K bracket KC times A multiplied by B, okay, close bracket times D. All right. Now here's the thing, you would see that since k, the small k here, mm -hmm. which is a rate constant, and kc is also an equilibrium constant, they're both constants, right? So I can always group my constants together, and I'm going to rebrand this, and I'll call this k prime, all right? And if I do that for you, and I have no space, so let me just do it on the left. So if I do that for you, you'll end up with k prime multiplied by a, b, and d. Now, um, Mr. Leong, so what you said was right, catalysts cannot, sorry, intermediates cannot be in your mm. rate equation, but can a catalyst be yes. in a rate equation? So you take a look, uh, just now we established that D is my catalyst, mm -hmm. and turns out the overall, equa uh, overall rate equation, there is also a D as well. Mm. Which makes sense, right? Because I can increase my rate of reaction by adding in more catalysts, that kind of makes sense, mm. okay? So what we're going to also see next is an energy profile diagram. Mr. Sure. Long, you want to guide me through? So the first thing that we do for energy profile is always to join the axis. Yep. And the axis is usually people where people get wrong uh, because you need to label it correctly. So the y-axis is always the energy, but the x-axis people always get it wrong. Uh. You'll put time, you'll put energy, uh, but the real one should be the... Progress of reaction. Progress of reaction or reaction pathway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So energy profile diagram always uh, is the one that has a hump, right? And the number of humps, right? actually turns out it corresponds to the number of steps, right? So That's if right. I see three steps, I expect to see three humps, mm. okay? So we're going to assume that this is going to be a overall exothermic reaction. Mm -hmm. So perhaps can you help me to draw in the reactant and the products first? Sure. So exothermic simply means that enthalpy change is negative, so the products must be at a lower energy level, okay? So uh, remember to label in all your uh, species. So Mr. Mr. Tim, I think there's something missing over here in your uh, species labeling. Yeah, because uh, we know that a catalyst is always there, right? At mm. the start and at the end. Mm. So by right, I should also have a catalyst here. Mm. So I'm going to write here D mm. plus D and also plus D at the end, right? That's right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also noticed just now that there is going to be uh, three humps yep. because to correspond to the three steps, right? Wait, wait, but how do I know which hump is the biggest? Uh -huh. Okay, so that talks about the idea of activation energy, yes. right? And how do I know who has the highest activation energy? So the slower step should have the highest EA, okay? okay. Which is the second step. Mm. So I'm going to do the first step first, not mm. very high EA. Second step is going to be the highest, mm -hmm. third step not so high, all right? Okay. So one of the things that's important for you to do is to label in the activation energy. So activation energy labeling must always be from the previous step energy level to the maximum point uh, of your hump. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Tim is drawing for me all the three activation energies. And uh, in order to see that the second step is the slow step, the arrow for the second activation energy must be the longest, mm -hmm. right? So one uh, important thing to note is that it doesn't mean that um, the point must be the highest, it just simply means that the arrow must be the longest. Yep, yep. All right, um, so Mr. Long, we're not quite done because I can see all my reactants, my intermediates, all the species are still missing, right? Yep. So let's, let's put them in. Okay, yeah. so uh, if I take a look at the first step, mm -hmm. you're only involving one A and one B molecule, yeah. which turns out to be C. Mm -hmm. So in the first uh, minimum point over here, you're going to label in the intermediates. So C is going to get produced. Okay. But you notice that the starting point, you have one A and two Bs. Mm -hmm. But you only use up one B. Mm -hmm. So which means that you're left with one more B, mm -hmm. and that's where you have to place it in as an excess uh, 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 reactant. Not forgetting that D has not participated in the reaction, yep. so the D must also be present there. Yep. Yep. Okay? So, how about this? For the second step, maybe pause the video for five seconds, go on and write down the intermediates that is present in the second step, which is the second minimum point. Mm -hmm. Okay, once you're ready, you can continue the video. So Mr. Tim, can you run yeah. us through how do we get the second uh, 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 intermediate? Sure, you can see that in the second step, C plus D will give you E. Mm -hmm. So one C, one D, gives me an E. So I'm just going to write here, E, right? Mm -hmm. And again, we didn't use the B at all, so B still remains in excess. 
I will bring the B over mm -hmm. and he comes here. Okay? And last but not least, take it away. So the last step only uses one E and one B, mm -hmm. as you can see from the reaction mechanism, yep. and it straight away turns back into D and F. Perfect. And that's where you see the final point at the lowest point, uh, your products contains an F and a D, mm -hmm. right? The D is a catalyst, it is regenerated at the end of a reaction. Lovely, very okay? good. One last thing to note, uh, yeah. I think we have not labeled in the overall enthalpy change. Yeah, of course. So the overall enthalpy change is exothermic. So from reactants, point down to the products, delta H is less than zero. Okay, okay. that's it. Okay, so Mr. Leong, um, elementary reactions are quite elementary. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, now if it's an elementary reaction, then there's only one step. Okay, so if I were to write my overall equation, it will just be that step. All right, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. So the overall equation is just A plus B gives you F. Mm -hmm. And now also, Mr. Leong, because this is the only step, this step will be? The slow step as the well. The slow step. Mm -hmm. So again, if I were to write my rate equation, how would that look like? So once again, we look at the top left-hand corner of your uh, of your of the of the screen over here. Okay. Uh, we must always look at the slow steps uh, stoichiometry of the reactants, right? So since the only step is the slow step, uh, you realize that um, the reactants is just having just one A and one B, yep. right? And uh, when I write, write out the rate equation, uh, the order must also be A power one and A power uh, B power one as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one really special thing that you notice about the rate equation is this. Huh? Uh, we say that uh, normally when I ask you to find the order of the rate equation, you say, what are the, what's the method that you're supposed to be doing to find out the order? We normally have to perform experiments, yep. right? Uh, there's no way you can correspond it to the stoichiometry. Mm -hmm. yeah? But for this case, for an elementary uh, reaction, this is the very special case scenario where it turns out the uh, order of reaction actually corresponds to the stoichiometry of the overall equation. Because okay. this is the slow step. Right? Yes, this is the slow yes. step. So uh, this is only it's very special, okay? It's only for elementary reactions that you can do that. Okay. So Mr. Tim, can you run us through the energy profile diagram again? Yeah, sure. So again, if it's only one step, it's only mm -hmm. going to be one hump. So again, we're going to first assume that the overall reaction is exo, mm -hmm. because most reactions in this world, they are exo. So um, energy and then progress of reaction, right? So again, reactants A plus B gives me F. And again, I'm going to draw how the products are lower energy than the reactants, and there's going to be only one step. So I draw one hump. So one hump. There we go. And that's it. Okay. Oops. Make sure you fill in your delta H and also your activation energy, Ea. So delta H, less than zero, exothermic. Ea is always from your reactants to your highest energy point. And that's Ea. Okay. Pretty easy stuff. Pretty elementary. Okay, that's it. Bye. Bye.